Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Terry White, and it's my pleasure to be streaming to you live once again on a new series we're calling Creative Kickoff. So I see some folks already in the chat, and thanks for joining me. And by the way, if you want to be in the main chat, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. That's where the moderators are. That's where the Adobe Live folks are, and that's where I'll be looking the most, but I'll try and look at the other chats as well, such as the one from Howard Young over on YouTube, and uh, Ozzy just joined on YouTube as well, so I see folks from all over the world coming in on both sets of chats. So if you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, or X, um, Twitch, LinkedIn, I think those are all the places I'm streaming to. I did say Facebook. If you're watching it on all those places, that's cool. You can hang out there or you can head over to the uh, b.net slash Adobe Live and that is where the main chat will be. Again, I'll try and monitor both chats. All right, so what are we doing today? Today we're doing uh, Creative Kickoff. And it, it's uh, I stole this topic from my master classes that I had done in the past and that is how would I edit your photos in Photoshop or and or Lightroom? Uh, so in this case, we're going to concentrate mostly on Photoshop since that's what the creative kickoffs on Wednesday are supposed to be. But we will, like mentioned, we'll give shout outs to Lightroom Classic uh, along the way as well since that's where all the, uh, that's where all the, uh, the, the images are. All right, so where did these images come from? They're not mine. They're previously submitted images for those master classes. In other words, people might submit 20 images for a class and I don't get to all 20. So I had this this big collection of images that I hadn't gotten to yet. Uh, I'll get to the ones I get to and then save them for the next week. I'll do a few of those in the next week, but then they're new submissions and, or next month. And then so uh, I built up quite a collection. I didn't need to go out and ask you for new ones for this one. Uh, but typically I put out a link on my social channels few days before, at least a week, or up to a week before the stream, so that you can submit your JPEGs and RAWs, and then I would give you my take on how I would edit them. And this is my take. This is not, you know, the law. You can do it your way. If you've edited your images already and you like the way you did it, great. I'm just giving you a second opinion. All right, so with that said, uh, let's dive in and take a look at the images that I've got kind of queued up and ready to go. I'm going to switch over to my desktop. And in my desktop here, I've got Lightroom Classic running and Lightroom Classic has, again, just an assortment of images from an assortment of different people from the past. And in no particular order, I'm gonna go through them. Uh, so these are like, uh, some of these could have been a month ago, some of these could have been six months ago, some of these could have been a year ago. Like that, that's how long I've been collecting images to work on. And uh, we're not gonna get through all of these today. Like I, I have literally dozens of images to go through. So I have enough images <laughs> to go through for like uh, the next 10 creative kickoffs if I wanted to uh, without asking for new ones. But anyway, um, I, I, I'm gonna start with one that was actually submitted from someone I know. And it's these first two images. Uh, let me show you what they look like. This is um, a friend of mine, uh, her name's Mia, and as you can see, she's kind of standing there with a harsh shadow behind her. The greetings from um, wherever this is, is cut off South Carolina. And then she did send me the, the full shot that's crooked, that's not her in it, and so forth and so on. So we're gonna combine these two to make that hero shot that she, she, she was wanting, but didn't really uh, photograph it. Um, to get all of that included. So we're gonna take care of it after the fact. And a lot of these are, are, are I shouldn't say a lot. Some of these are coming from non-professional, she's not a professional photographer, but it's taken with her phone or taken with her husband's phone. This is just taken with someone's phone. And, and so she'll send me things like this occasionally and say, can you make this better? And I'll say, sure, I'll give it a shot. All right, so, and then I, that, and I say, if, if I do edit it, I get to use it in my class. <laughs> So, so in other words, it's a, you're not paying me, but I do get to use it as an example. All right, so let's go ahead and select both of those images. I'm gonna I'm in Lightroom Classic, so I'm gonna hit Command E on Mac. That would be Control E on um, Windows, and that should open up a copy of those images in Photoshop. There they are. All right, so that's the the second one. That's um, that's the, uh, the just the background that's not cropped off. 
and then there's this one that's cropped off. So we're going to actually work on the background and get the background ready first, and then we'll bring her into it. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, let's let me show you a trick because not only is this uh, it's not cropped off, but it, it's taken at an angle because you can see like the angle in the upper left corner is like you can see part of this. You see the in other words, the person wasn't standing straight on on the wall, and therefore the the image is skewed. And so we want to uh, want to take care of that. So I'm going to do that actually in a uh, uh, yeah, I could do it. In, in, I was gonna say I was gonna do it in non-destructive. It doesn't matter. Uh, so because I already have the copy, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go to my camera raw filter, and in my camera raw filter, I'm gonna go to the crop tool, and in the crop tool, we've got geometry. So I'm not cropping the images, but I am gonna use the crop tool, and you could do it manually. You could uh, do it auto. You could use any one of the presets. You can drag out your own guides if the presets don't work. So lots of ways to do geometry. I'm just going to hit auto and boom, <laughs> auto straightened out the photo. That's well, that's all I needed it to do because I, you know, I don't want to put her on a crooked photo if I can avoid it. All right. So now we got the, um, we got the auto done. So this is before and that's after. So we got that in place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up the background a little before we bring in our hero, our, our main person. So I'm going to use the, the new remove tool. The remove tool is AI based, but it's not generative AI. In other words, it is still using the pixels that are in the image. It's just not, and it's not generating new ones. So um, what I like to use this tool for, and I use it a lot because it's really good, is I like to use, um, I like to use it for removing distractions. And Voodoo Val, you're right. That is a good trade. Uh, yep. So, hey, I, I, you get an edited image, but I get to use it. As an, as an example. So now I'm painting and you'll notice that nothing's happening. Like it's just giving you that pink paint and we're gonna get rid of this, um, the safety cone here or whatever this cone is for that doesn't really serve any purpose for this shot. There are some, some weeds or garbage over here on the right hand side. I'm just painting that all out. And you notice nothing's happening and there's a pipe sticking out of the wall. We don't need that. And there's, ha there's part of a sign, like a little bit of a sign here. I'm just going to go ahead and paint over all that. Now, why is nothing happening? Because I've got the remove tool set to, uh, I've turned off remove after each stroke. So in other words, that's an option up here at the top. I've turned it off, remove after each stroke so that I could paint, 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 get it all painted in. And then when I'm ready, I can say, go ahead and do it. I just click once instead of having to wait for it to render every single time. So that way I get, um, I get to just have it render once and it renders out all that stuff without me having to do it each time. Um, you thought the pipe was a golf ball. No, it looks like a pipe sticking out of the wall, but whatever it was, golf ball or pipe, it's, it's just a distraction. So I see a couple more distractions I missed. There's some more stuff down here at the bottom. And, and again, I could spend 20 minutes cleaning this up, but we're not gonna spend 20 minutes. So we're just gonna go ahead and get those, those most egregious things out of the way first. And now we're ready to bring in our hero. There's one more little thing up there. And this is like a puzzle. Once you start seeing things, you, you can't help but like want to get rid of more things. All right. So with that said, we got rid of the most things. And I could even get rid of that fence if I want it, but we'll leave that there. And uh, let's go back and get her now. So she's here and she's cropped off, which is not great, but it's okay. Uh, I'm going to use the object selection tool. And just by grabbing the object selection tool, it automatically figured out she's an object. And she didn't want the harsh shadow. Like that was the other thing that was bugging her, bugging me too. So this way it's not selecting the harsh shadow. And I can just go ahead and click and it will, yep, make that selection. Now, uh, you got to make sure you want to zoom in and make sure you do a good job. And if you really want to do a good job, you go into selected mask and make sure you get the hair right. But it looks like it looks pretty good, at least for a quick example. And now I'll go ahead and just hit copy, command C, and head over to the other image and hit paste, command V as in Victor. And that will automatically paste her in on a new layer so I can move her around. So we're gonna move her down where she should be and you know probably maybe put her right there. And that would be, that could be my finished image. So we cleaned up a background. First of all, we, we fixed the perspective. We cleaned up the background. 
We then copied her and pasted her in without the shadow. And that's all she wanted. That, that, that was the request. Now I'm going to take it up a notch and I'm going to, um, I'm going to create a composite layer, command shift Mac, command option shift E. We'll create a composite layer of all of those. So I can turn off these. So now this is just one layer of the whole thing. And the reason I'm doing that one layer of the whole thing, and we'll just call this composite, is because I want to try something. I'm going to experiment. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my crop. Because again, I got my finished image. I could hit save, give it to her. She'd be ecstatic. But let's do one more thing. Let's go hit the crop tool. And let's pull this down a bit. I would say right about there probably. And we're gonna, and the reason it's yellow is because my background color is yellow. But we're gonna make sure we're on generative expand in the options. So we are gonna use some generative uh, um, content on this. I just wanna see what it would do. Sometimes it gives the person good feet. Sometimes it doesn't. And I have nothing to lose but either an undo if I don't like it. Uh, so I, I'll try it. Because again, she wasn't expecting to have feet. She didn't take the photo with feet, so why would she? Uh, but, <laughs> okay, that's one example. Looks like she's kind of standing in midair there. Oh, just made her legs longer. And that's not a good, that's actually a good example of the sidewalk there, but it's not a good example of her legs. So uh, I could generate again and just say, okay, I'm just rolling the dice again, see what else I get. And I could live with this one. I would just crop it up a little bit so it doesn't look like she's standing in midair. But let's see what we get one more time. All right. And we're almost there. Yeah, see, we're getting better. That one's okay. That one's not okay. That one's not okay. And by the way, trash the ones you know you're not going to use because otherwise they're just taking up space in your file. So for example, if I go back to this one, I know I'm not gonna use that one, so I would trash it. Uh, that one I might use. This one I know I wouldn't use, let me trash it. And that one I probably wouldn't use, let me trash it. And that one, I'd have to zoom in and see what her feet look like, but it doesn't, it doesn't look great. Uh, so this would probably be the one. And again, if I did wanna keep that, I'd have to put in some shadows and everything on, on the bottom there to make it look like she wasn't just standing in midair. And also, I'd probably want to put in a sidewalk because she wouldn't be standing on the wall. So this would take a little bit more work to finish it, but just giving you that option to show that, hey, if you wanted to put someone's cropped off legs in there, you could. And uh, again, if I don't use that one, I still have the original that was completely cropped off. So this is where we came from. This is where we ended up. All right. so. Uh, last thing I would do is take this one more step and I would pull this up just a bit more just to put it up, oh, not crop the feet, just right at the edge of the feet. There we go. And that way it doesn't look as bad. But like I said, I would probably work on some shadows and things underneath that. Okay. That was an experiment that was done. We'll go ahead and save that. It'll save it with all the layers and then it will return it back and we don't need to do anything with this one. We'll re just return this one back to Lightroom with no changes. Okay, so now let's head back to Lightroom and here's our, here's where we started. That was the original request. That was the one that we fixed and that was the one that we used to fix it. So getting rid of distractions, adding feet, getting rid of the shadows. Again, feet were optional, but let's keep going. Okay, so next up, let's go to this one. And this one's kind of the same kind of thing. You got, you got feet cropped off and you got some other issues going on as well. So what I would do here is while I'm in Lightroom, um, I, which is where I usually start the process, I would hit develop. I would go in and get out of lens blur. I would go up here, there we go. And let's see what this is. So this is a raw file. So that means I can apply uh, raw profiles to it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto to auto tone it. I'm going to go ahead and grab my eyedropper tool because it looks like there's some white balance issues going on over here. So I'm just going to click the white balance eyedropper, kind of get rid of some of that yellowing. And um, the other thing that's kind of bugging me about this photo is there's a little bit too much headroom and also that little dark corner up there. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my crop tool and just bring this down a bit to something like that. Okay, so. I would, then I see a distraction over here on the, on the floor. I'd probably get rid of that. 
But now let's head over to Photoshop because those things are easier to do in Photoshop. So once again, Command E, uh, or PC Control E, and that will take it over to Photoshop. And once again, we'll grab that great remove tool and we will make it bigger. There we go. And we'll just paint these little, whatever that is on the floor, the little paper there. And we'll just go ahead and say, yes, do that. Oh, left a piece out. And one more time. Great. So got rid of the distractions. And one more time, I just because I can see if I can do it, no one's expecting it. But we'll grab our crop tool and we'll pull this one down just a bit to expose where their feet would have been. And we'll just go ahead and say, yes, use generative expand to do this. Well, Voodoo Val, I'm glad I showed you something that you didn't know existed. What was it? All right. <laughs> and it did give him feet, but it cropped it off some more. So it still cropped off his toes. So let's let's keep going. Maybe I didn't pull it down far enough. So let's undo that one and pull it down a little further. And that yellow's bugging me. Hold, hold on, I got to fix that. The yellow's bugging me. Let's go ahead and set our default colors. Just because I don't want to see the yellow. Let's pull it down a little further. And now let's see what we get. As General Kenobi says, you still have much to learn, my young Padawan. All right, let's see what we get with this one. There we go. Now we're getting there, and that's a much better portrait. Now, again, we don't need as much space. I'm not, I, I don't mind as much space at the bottom. I don't, I do mind it if it's at the top. So we, I could leave that, but let's go ahead and just crop it up just a hair. And that's it. So that would be my finished uh, composite with the layer and I'll just go ahead and save it. And that will save it back as a Photoshop layered file back into Lightroom Classic and put it next to the original. So a lot of times people ask, well, hey, aren't you gonna duplicate the background before you start doing anything? And I say, no, because why do we duplicate the background? We duplicate the background because we don't want it, we wanna have a safety net in case we make a mistake. My safety net is the original that's already in Lightroom Classic. So I still have the original untouched photo that is the safety net if I ever need to go back. And then I have the one that I fixed. So that's why you don't ever see me duplicating the layer the minute I get into Photoshop. Uh, will you show a compositing in three images on a solid background using Photoshop? Howard's asking, will I show a composite of three images in the future um, uh, on Photoshop? Sure, I, I don't mind doing compositing. And you could probably look up one of my previous composite positing sessions. Uh, but yeah, I don't mind doing a new one. All right, so what's what's kind of bothering me about this photo? Number one, I don't know what it is, but when people do a photo and there is an address in it, that bugs me because that's kind of private. Like, uh, for, I don't know what street this is. I don't know what city this is. I don't know these people. But I know it's address 4361, and I don't want people to be able to look and find where that is. So I would take that out even if, again, I don't know what city, don't know where these people are, don't know these people, but that's one of the first things that would bug me. But let's go ahead and go to our, through our normal process. So this is not a raw file, so it's a JPEG. So I can't apply a profile, but I can hit auto. And auto tone didn't really do a whole lot more to it. It looks pretty good the way it is. Uh, I do, for an outdoor shot, do add a little dehaze just to bring that back a little bit more. Now. If I wasn't going to go into Photoshop, I am because there's two things bugging me. But if I wasn't going to go into Photoshop, here's what I might try. I might try to go into the new lens blur that's built into uh, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and Camera Raw. And I would apply, hit apply. And what this is doing is it's analyzing the image. First of all, it's, doing a, it's finding the subject. It's doing a select subject. And then it will allow me to defocus or blur the background. So it's it's blurred it a little bit already, but if I go and blur that even more, you can see that background becoming more shallow depth of field and, it, and you can even apply uh, which, uh, which bokeh look you like for that. So it's not gonna make a big difference. It makes a big difference on lights and things like that in the background. Not gonna see a huge difference here. Now, uh, oh, I do see a huge difference on that one. So let's say that address is still readable because it still thinks that's close enough to the foreground. Well, the good thing about this is that it also gives you a, a um, oh, where is it? There we go, refine. 
So you get a refine option down below where you can put things back into focus that it should have, shouldn't have taken out of focus, or you could blur things that are still in focus that you don't want to be in focus. So like, for example, her fingertips coming around the person that she's hugging, I want those to still be in focus. So I'm just brushing those back into focus. But that address, uh, I might blur that a little bit more. So now it's even harder to read. So it becomes part of that shallow depth of field. It's in the background. I'm good now because you, you can't really make out what that is. And I could blur it even more to make sure you don't make it out what it is. But that's what I would do if I wasn't going to go into, um, into Photoshop. So let's turn off. So, uh, so lens blur, that's a great new option. It's, it's uh, technology preview, early access, but you can play with it today. So that's the difference. That's off and that's on. So it makes a big difference for the background, but let's turn it off. Let's go into edit. Let's edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments. And you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab that remove tool, which is so amazing. Great for stuff like this. Make my brush a little bigger using my right bracket key. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint out that address because I'm not just gonna blur it, I'm gonna get rid of it completely. Because uh, someone said it in the chat, you just wanna read it. So that becomes a distraction because it's making people read that and not pay attention to the subject. Like where's 4361, what street do they live on? Where's that house? Is that in a condo? Is that in a Like, we don't want them having to think about all that. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I would edit it in Photoshop to say, do not read it. All right, anyway, so we got that. And now I told you there were two things bugging me. That was one. Uh, this stuff up here is kind of like uh, dirty looking. Like, I I'm just noticing that for the first time. So I, I don't know what the remove tool might do on this. Let's just take a look and see if it will remove that kind of, well, yes, yeah, doing a good job cleaning that up. So that's less distracting. The remove tool, I'm telling you, it's gold. Like it's just an amazing tool and it just keeps getting better. All right, anyway, uh, the second thing that was bugging me was her shoulder be her and her elbow being cut off. So let's go ahead and grab the crop tool once again. And also this gives you a good opportunity to crop it to a specific aspect ratio. So if you need a four by five, eight by 10, you can get that four by five, eight by 10 and do your crop to get you to get you what you want. So oh, it went a little too far. There we go. So we we'll use generative expand and we'll, we'll just bring in that little piece of cropping that uh, is, I don't know why it's bothering me. I don't mind usually mine a crop like that, but on this photo for whatever reason it is. All right, that's better. And I have three to choose from. That one, that one, kind of like that one, kind of like, I don't like that one. I do like that one. So I'd go with the third one. And that would be it. That would be what I would do for that photo. Um, they look pretty good as they are. I don't, they don't need a lot of retouching. Like there's a little bit of lint here and I'm just being nitpicky. Uh, so I start cleaning up like the, the little pieces of things that are, could be a distraction as well. Like the the grass growing between the cement and the little lines, like that's really being nitpicky, but I could do that. And that would be what I would do for this photo. And God, we're almost already out of time. This time flies when you're having fun, when you're doing this stuff in Photoshop. All right, uh, <laughs> Photoshop needs a pressure cleaning tool. It has one, it's called the remove tool. All right, let's see if we got one more in us to, to take us home. All right, uh, this is kind of like the same thing. You got distractions here before you even get to the subject. So I'm not even gonna do the subject part. I'm just gonna show you getting rid of the distractions. And uh, you guessed it. Let's go to our remove tool. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna get rid of this can and this piece of paper. Great, those are gone. And uh, we don't need to see someone's graffiti. So let's just clean that. Oh, you know what? No, let's, let's, let's not do it that way. Let's undo. Let's do it with generative fill. So I'm just gonna make a selection around this using my lasso. Like that. And we'll use um, a contextual taskbar, generative fill, no prompt. And we'll just hit generate. And while we wait for that, I will say my goodbyes because I'm like a second, not a second, but like less than a minute from being cut off before the next show. 
So with that said, there's our distractions gone. We would clean up the lighting a little bit on that shot, but you get the idea. Those are just a few ideas of things you can do to make your photos better using Lightroom and Photoshop, especially the new remove tool in generative AI. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We will catch you on the next one. Yes, that's someone's art. It doesn't belong in my photo. All right. Bye, everybody.